I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Daniel Tall, Network Steward of Ichi. Daniel, welcome to the show, and it's a pleasure to have Ichi back once again. Thanks, Ashton. Excited to be here and talk to you guys a little bit more about Ichi. Definitely. A lot has happened in cryptocurrency and with Ichi overall since we last spoke. Uh, almost six months ago, um, which is like years in cryptocurrency. Uh, so let's first of all get the viewers up to speed on what is Ichi for those who haven't seen our first interview and, and what are the main focuses that you're bringing into the DeFi and the blockchain space? Yeah, great question. So uh, Ichi has been around for a while now in, uh, in DeFi terms for sure. Um, and, you know, we consider ourselves a... Uh, of course, a DAO first and foremost, um, working as a community to build out uh, DeFi and specifically financial decentralized financial infrastructure for uh, different types of protocols in the DeFi space. Um, originally, and I think last time we spoke, we deep dove a little bit into uh, our stable assets or what we call our branded dollars. Um, which are stable assets for different communities backed by their token um, and USDC. Uh, and since then, we've, we've um, kind of built out a little bit of our quote unquote arsenal of products um, that we use to kind of help build out uh, the DAO infrastructure for different communities and, and protocols. Um, and basically the way we see it is uh, the DeFi space has three main pillars that we're looking to tackle. Um, one is the stable coin or stable asset pillar. Uh, the second being uh, the exchange pillar. Uh, and the third being the lending pillar. Um, and since we last spoke, um, outside of, you know, some of the big uh, partnerships we've uh, we've kind of signed and, and uh, connected with Dow to Dow, which we'll dive a little bit deeper into, I'm sure, in a bit. Um, we have uh, very much focused on, within these three pillars, uh, continuing to build out our branded dollars and the stablecoin pillar, um, building out our angel vaults, which is our new product in the exchange pillar, um, and creating our new uh, lending pool on Rari, uh, which has uh, done extremely well. I think it's the third largest pool after about six weeks of being around So wow. um, on, on Rari Capital. So uh, yeah, that's where we are today. Very incredible. Uh, great updates. Daniel, thanks for sharing that to, to kick us off. And yeah, I did see a lot of news about these angel vaults, uh, which sounds new to me. I haven't heard of angel vaults in <laughs> DeFi. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of angels getting involved in uh, investing in, in DeFi and, and large institutions as well. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on what exactly is the purpose of the angel vaults and how does it benefit these organizations? Yeah, definitely. Um, Vault is probably one of the most overused words in the DeFi space when it comes to uh, different kinds of protocols and uh, and things being built. But uh, on our end, the Angel Vaults are really a Uniswap V3 liquidity management protocol, mm -hmm. um, specifically uh, for both um, you know protocols themselves for for DeFi projects, but also. Um, for DeFi users. Um, and the idea behind them is that we're really trying to align uh, the goals and vision of uh, DeFi protocols and DeFi users, general liquidity providers. Um, so what, what we do is we enable users to have general DeFi retail users to have the experience that they had using Uniswap V2. So, you know, depositing directly to a liquidity pool and kind of forgetting about that liquidity, not having to manage their position to earn fees um, with the power of concentrated liquidity, right? Um, which Uniswap V3 provides, being able to concentrate your liquidity in a cert between certain price ticks and earning uh, more for the liquidity you're providing. Now, on the other side, for the projects themselves, um, we are actually building these uh, these angel vaults as a way to uh, provide price protection for them in a downward uh, turning market, and specifically uh, decorrelating their uh, token price from the price of Ethereum when the price when when the market goes kind of. Uh, bearish as it's been recently with some of the uh, unfortunate news. Um, and 
and allowing it to continue to be correlated directly with ETH when the price of mm. the assets start to rise. Mm. Great backstory on that. That bringing what what I got out of that what you said was you know aligning the incentives of, of DeFi users with the protocols. And I feel although DeFi is uh, early on, it's already been you know a couple of years that it's been been being worked on. I'm curious from your perspective, being deep in this, trying to align these incentives, how big of an issue is this? I feel like you know the incentives should be aligned um, already, if not need, you know needing all these other solutions to do this. Is this a huge problem? And are there other people working on it that it's such a big of a problem, or do you really have uh, a stranglehold on on the solution? Yeah, that's that's actually a great question, um, and it kind of leads to where we started when we. We uh, decided to build out some of these angel vaults um, and the protocol in general at the beginning. Um, you know, when when Uniswap V3 launched, um, I think when we looked across all these different um, AMMs and decentralized exchanges, what you saw is the way uh, different types of uh, of projects uh, were able to incentivize liquidity was through providing these uh, yield farming strategies and providing rewards for users. Uh, to deposit their liquidity um, in two assets, basically a 50-50 mix of usually their native token and you know ETH or USDC or some other base asset um, into these liquidity pools. And then it allowed for you to gain back that LP and deposit it to earn, to earn rewards, usually offsetting some type of um, impermanent loss, but also allowing you to earn um, on the fact that you're locking in your liquidity. Mm -hmm. um, and really this kind of led to a few problems. One, uh, these sort of mercenaries, right? Who would uh, deposit their liquidity just to earn these high fees and rewards and then pull that liquidity out. Um, and uh, the other piece is that uh, when you are doing this as a liquidity provider, you're providing a native asset and, a, and some other base asset to liquidity pools. What you're essentially doing is creating both buy and sell pressure by creating this market for these two assets on, on, a native, on the native token. So you see communities incentivizing um, different, different liquidity providers to provide both buy and sell pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to solve those issues. What we wanted to do was say, hey, why as a community are you paying out um, these liquidity providers in your token to provide both buy and sell pressure on your token? Um, that could be both positive and negative. It could, it could actually harm you. Um, what these angel vaults do instead is allow people to only put buy side pressure on their asset um, so that if there is any type of sell pressure in the, in the market, it stops that token's price from going down. Uh, and, and that's the idea behind these angel vaults. You deposit one type of asset uh, directly into the vault, uh, and that's not your native asset. It's the, the one paired with it. Uh, and what it does is it creates this large wall of buyers of last resort so that if people start to dump your token in general into uh, tries to try to sell it, you know, on Uniswap V3, uh, there's this large buy wall ready to uh, stop the price from dropping. Mm -hmm. uh, going full circle back to the angel vaults. I appreciate all that information. I think it's very valuable for people that don't really understand exactly how the liquidity pools work and, and how decentralized exchanges are able to build order books through the people and, and not through a centralized order book management uh, market makers as they do in the old days and in the centralized exchanges. So thank you for like clarifying all of that. I appreciate that, Daniel, um, for everybody. Sure. Um, and you also mentioned, you know, out of the three pillars, there is the lending as well. And it seems more and more people, uh, especially when the market's at its top and in the bull market, are looking to like borrow capital and get extra capital. Uh, to invest in more digital assets uh, as they rise. And with that lending aspect, you're, you're now partnering with Rari, is, is that right? Can you talk about what's going on there with Ichi and, and, and how that integrates into the other pillars? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we built out uh, a Rari Fuse pool uh, about six weeks ago. 
Um, and really the idea behind it is, of course, with borrowing and lending, making everything more capital efficient for uh, DeFi users and specifically DeFi users who are um, interested and are using Ichi, Ichi's protocol and Ichi's tokens. Um, and what we're able to do was build out uh, with the help of the Rari team, um, this, uh, this lending and borrowing pool on Rari. Uh, and within uh, six weeks, we're actually able to grow it into the third largest pool um, across all of uh, Rari's different, different lending and borrowing pools. Um, but yeah, the key there was really, we wanted to give people who were holding Ichi, our governance token, XIichi, the, the stake governance token as well, um, and people who are depositing into our angel vaults the ability to take those tokens, uh, use them as collateral, and borrow against them. And one of the most compelling aspects of this is, remember, because of these angel vaults, I know I always go back to them, but they've they've been so incredible in the last uh, over the last ninety days that um, it's been it's been awesome to watch. Uh, since we really launched the the Angel Vault for Ichi, um, the Ichi price has been stable and, and actually has has risen, I think, almost four x at this point um, through this kind of recent bear market. Um, but the key there is because of that Angel Vault protecting the price of Ichi, um, you, we see users feeling really comfortable. Uh, depositing or supplying Ichi and, and XIichi and all these um, Ichi-backed you know, tokens into uh, Rari and using it as collateral because of the lower risk for liquidity. Um, and that's, I think, what's really fueled our ability to grow this uh, lending and borrowing platform uh, to, to you know, propel it to being number three in TVL on there. Definitely. Great to hear. And yes, back to the Angel Vaults. Uh, allowing people to get collateral to lend. I think uh, it's obviously important to know when uh, what tokens you're going to uh, put up for collateral and, and what that collateral amount is, you know, and because as you mentioned there with the angel vaults, uh, keeping the ET price lifted, um, if you are taking a loan with collateral and it's a, an asset, you know, if it's a smaller cap coin that doesn't have an angel vault in, in some other project and the, and the price of that dips, uh, you know, you're going to be getting a margin call or you're going to be losing your loan and, and, and losing your capital. So I think that's good to understand definitely the risks uh, and, and rewards when you're moving into uh, different assets like that, to, especially when, you, when you're margining or, or lending. Um, are there different types of risks um, that aren't uh, what you would see in a traditional lending platform because of the way that the Ichi network is set up? So I think risks are always there, um, you know, taking into account the fact that there are always, um, you know, smart contract risks, um, things of that nature uh, in, in this kind of space. Um, that, that's always up there. I think the cool thing about Rari is the ability for anyone to come and create a borrowing and lending pool mm -hmm. and be able to uh, play with those levers, right, of the different types of supply caps, closed factors, whatever that may be. Um, that's what's super interesting about Rari um, and really being able to incentivize um, each of those supply or borrow assets accordingly. Um, so that's what's interesting there. It does open, you know, like anything, um, lending pools are open to different types of liquidity risk, um, as well as smart contract risk around these different um, these different protocols. And from an Ichi perspective, um, you know, we take security extremely um, extremely seriously. We have uh, multiple bounty programs with um, Unify and Hats Finance. Uh, we've been audited multiple times by uh, Quantstamp, Certic, and a few others. Um, and, uh, and we actually are now partnering uh, with a few insurance protocols, uh, or I would say protection protocols for things from smart contract protection with InsureAce uh, to even DPEG insurance uh, or, or DPEG protection really with uh, Risk Harbor. Uh, around our branded dollars. So uh, we're really, really focused on security in all angles, whether it's, um, you know, smart contract, DPEG, um, and, and we're looking at ensuring that 
our users feel comfortable uh, holding Ichi and, and understanding that uh, we're doing our best to minimize risks across all these different platforms. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And thank you for covering that. Good to always mention it, although, you know, not something to be scared of, um, just something to be aware of as, as you, you know, it's your capital, especially in DeFi, you're, you're controlling your own keys and you control where those funds go and, and who you lend it out to and what risks are associated associated with that. And great to hear about all of the audits and, and security measures that, that Ichi is taking. Uh, now, there's so many great things that we've already spoken about that, you know, in these three pillars that, that Ichi is working on. Is there anything else that the viewers have to look forward to as 2022 keeps going, Ichi continues to grow, uh, that maybe is coming down the pipeline in, in the coming months? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, we are always heads down working at Ichi. Um, I think it, you can see that from our, from our past. You know, we had a fair launch. Uh, didn't do too much announcing and marketing at first, just focused solely on building the best product for uh, DeFi protocols, um, as well as our users. Um, we are definitely, definitely very focused on this multi-chain world. We believe it's a multi-chain world. Um, and as of today, our native um, smart contracts are only on mainnet, um, but in very, very soon, we are looking to move over to uh, a new blockchain, look for an announcement in the coming week. Um, so we will be on an L2 soon, uh, which is super exciting, lowering fees, being able to have a lot less friction when it comes to gas fees and, and minting and creating um, different types of assets. Um, and we are super focused on both the, the multi-chain aspect as well as building out a lot of our current infrastructure. So again, tackling those three different um, pillars being uh, stable assets, um, lending and exchanges across these different multi-chain, across the multi-chain world. So um, that's where we're focused on. Um, we're gonna continue to build and uh, get excited for it. <laughs> Definitely, it's very exciting. Uh, for the viewers that want to follow along with that update that's coming out and everything, Ichi, uh, I I'm excited to hear about, you know, what is this layer two solution? Where is the best place to follow along for those updates and to get involved and, and speak with the Ichi community? Yeah, great, great question. Um, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at Ichi Farm. Uh, follow us in our Discord and in our Telegram. Uh, you will be able to find those links directly in our Twitter uh, and, um, you know, ichi.org for all the information you need on Ichi as well as our app, which you can get through there. So that's about it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. Appreciate it. I will leave those links in the description box below. All the best with this update coming for Ichi and all the updates. And let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Ashton. It was a great time.